Are you giving your all to the one who gave his all for you? Welcome to The Pursuit, a Cross Point City Church podcast that pursues a deeper dive into the scripture from last week's sermon. I'm Will Goodwin, here with our lead pastor, James Griffin. How good you doing? I'm good, man. Good to be back with you. I know. It's been a minute. It's it has been. Great. been. We, we, were, uh, we were just talking about hoodie weather. I write. That's... You haven't been on the podcast since hoodie weather came I, back I, I, I only want to host when it's hoodie weather. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Uh, I do want to jump right into it because I think yeah. this weekend was a massive, big, huge weekend. Yes. And what we launched, which we're going to get in, is a big deal, right? right so right. all to him, this series, we're talking about something new, taking our church on a discipleship journey. Right. It's a new idea, big idea. And we've done big things, but this, yeah, yeah. by far, biggest mm-hmm. thing we've ever done a- as a church. No doubt. Right? I mean, I keep saying it, most significant season in our history, setting out to affect more lives than we have ever affected. It is the biggest thing that God has ever called us to do. And I'm believing that we're about to see a move of God on oh, yeah. anything we've ever seen. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. I believe, and, and, and this isn't something that we just, you know, put in place a month or so ago. We <laughs> have been talking about this now really for, yeah. for two years. It's been a long time. Yeah, almost two years, yeah. Yeah, I mean, really the conversation started when maybe a year and a half ago. I think okay. maybe that's kind of where well, it was sparked a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah like on sabbatical, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment, but this year in particular has right. has just been packed. I mean, we've done off-site retreats, we've done vision nights, we've had to create so much uh, copy and resources and content and videos, and there's just been so much that has gone into this. So like you said, we didn't just wing this, and yeah. we didn't throw it together last minute. This has been something that that we have felt the Lord calling us to for a while now, so to, to be at this point where we're finally getting it in front of our people, it's pretty special. Yeah. Well, you could see it, too, because on Thursday night, I mean, you were fired up. We watched that yeah, longer yeah. bumper video, which, by the way, if you haven't seen, if you haven't watched the sermon, you need to go and watch the sermon. Yeah. Uh, because you could just feel it. You could sense it. Like, you you gave a, a short version of kind of the pitch right. as our bumper video, and then you came out just, I mean, swinging. Well, right? it was, I will say this for Thursday night, and I was talking to a friend on the phone about it this morning. It was so strange what happened on Thursday night. I, I started to speak after that video, and I was hit with this wave of emotion. Mm. And the thing that was strange about it is, like, the first four or five sentences that I said, I've just been saying those for the past few weeks. I was just repeating things that I've already said. But I think the realization of, like, okay, we're finally here. Yeah. We're finally here. We're, we're, we're not just talking about this in private settings or behind closed doors or in special meetings, but we're finally here. We're getting this before our people, our entire church, this wave of emotion hit me, and I was like, "All right, bro, you got to pull it together," you know. And and fortunately, I was able to. But but it was it was overwhelming. I just I think the the realization of what was happening in that moment that that this really is we're stepping into this now with our entire congregation and knowing what's at stake and all the implications of going on this journey. I don't know, man. It just it hit me hard mm. in that moment, and and it was a powerful night. It was a powerful weekend. But, and and even the response that we got from people online, yeah, right, was crazy. Well, because uh, we're, we're asking our entire church to 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 really embark on a two year discipleship journey, so we're yeah. setting that up in this series. Yep. And I know we're going to talk about the details of that, but but just you pitching it this this weekend, Thursday yeah. and and Sunday, and then the eleven fifteen, you mentioned an email that you we hadn't received right. yet, and you mentioned at the eleven fifteen, people watching. In North Dakota, and this wasn't the only email. We got multiple right, emails, right. but you you talked about a family who watching in North Dakota. Husband was is military, is based, yep. and she feels connected to what God is doing here at Crossman City Church. And asked if we would send her the same discipleship guide, the prayer journal that we're giving out yep. to everyone, and a bracelet, so she could right. and her husband could follow along. And yep. and multiple people have asked for that. Which, if I can, just because you're going to hear all this, we're going to talk about this in detail. But as we're talking about this, and as you go watch the, the the sermon if you would like that because we're going to do it we're going to send it to her all the people who email so if you're watching this right now and you would like that information or you'd like the discipleship guide or bracelet we'll send a whole packet to you just email us at info at crosspointcitychurch.com mm-hmm. or or uh, give us a direct message on social media sites and we will send that stuff to you and you can follow along and, and pray along with us as we get through the series and dig in absolutely yeah yeah i mean here's the reality we, we have a lot of people connected to our church all over the country 
We've even got a few families connected in different places in the world. That's right. And we're not trying to replace a local church anywhere, but but we are aware that there are people in places where they're not there's not really a local church that they're connected with right. or able to connect with. And so, man, if we can help people take steps of faith and walk in obedience to Christ, and if we can help to disciple people from afar, we definitely want to be open to that and and we want to be available for that. So I just I, yeah. want, I just want to reiterate that, Will. Yeah. If you want to be a part of this with us, we don't really care where you are. Yeah. Let us know, and we'd love to have you jump in. Because I think we've got people listening in every state, yeah. all 50 states. We've got people in multiple countries all over the world. Yeah. So, yeah, come join with us. Let's pray together. Let's let's see what God does through Cross Point City That's Church right. here in Cartersville, but yeah. everywhere else, too. Yep. Yep. Now, I know I, know I said uh, two years ago, because I remember when we were just praying about moving, even though you didn't have words around it, mm-hmm. and we started having conversations about God stirring in you, then you went on your sabbatical. Maybe I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but you went on your sabbatical, and you came back and like, I got it, Yeah. yeah right? Yep. And then we dug in. But even prior to that, knowing that God was stirring in you something, yeah. and now just to see the fruition of that, you got to be. Yeah, excited to yeah. finally be talking about it publicly. Yeah, well, there's no doubt. And and let me just speak to the sabbatical thing, and then we'll jump back up, Will, to the overview of All to Him, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. But, you, you know, I mean, as you say the timeline out loud, you're right. I mean, we were talking about it prior to my sabbatical, and what we decided to do is to push the timeline back because we just felt like mm-hmm. we weren't ready yet. We, right. we were going to have to rush it. And I did. I think that was the Lord's yeah. kindness toward us. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. That's yeah, right. yep. be- because I was able to get away for eight weeks last summer, and it was all very timely. I mean, we were coming off of my daughter's heart surgery and recovery, mm. and I was exhausted, and mm. it was just a crazy season. So those eight weeks away, I I was able to really do business with the Lord, and I felt like I heard very, very clearly from the Lord on several things, and this was one of those things. You know, I shared it over the weekend, but... Over the course of those eight weeks, and this happens a lot when I take preaching breaks or sabbaticals like this and I just get away, this theme of surrender just kept popping up. I mean, have you ever had a time like this where it's like every book you read, every sermon you listen to, every podcast you turn on, it's like the same thing. God's just shouting at you. It's like he's got you by the collar. He's like, hey, are you listening? I'm trying to say something. And it was like that. And here's what was so interesting. You know, I came back. I told the team about it, told the elders about it, had no idea what any of it meant, just really felt strongly that the Lord was about to call our church to greater surrender to the Lordship of Christ. And I get back from sabbatical and start preaching John's gospel. Mm. And wouldn't you know it, all throughout the gospel of John, there is this call to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And it's been interesting how this has come out in my preaching over the last several months as we've walked through that gospel together. You know, belief in John's gospel is pastuo, it means to entrust. I've said it a hundred times by now. This is this is a call to give our entire lives to Jesus. It's it's more than just intellectual agreement. This is me committing my life to Christ in faith. It is me handing the reins of myself over to him. So I, I do, I find it fascinating that we push the timeline back. I go on sabbatical, theme of surrender. I come back, we're preaching the gospel of John, and this is all led up to this moment where... We're launching this discipleship journey. Mm. Even the fact that we were in John 17 for the three weeks leading up to all to him, right. talking about right. eternal life and the glory of God and living life set apart and the importance of unity as it concerns mission and gospel credibility. Mm. Will, we couldn't have planned it yeah. like that if we tried. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I find it so incredible that the Lord has gone before us uh, in all of these ways. And it just makes me really, really eager to see what God is about to do in and through our church. Yeah. Just, uh, man, so humbled and honored to be a part of it all. I think when people, because that's an important point, because I, I think people would would believe or, or think at least that that was the plan. Right. Okay, we're, this is where we're going to land in John. Yeah, yeah. We're not smart enough. Like, right. I, I'm not, you know, to have planned that far in advance yep. to make sure, hey, listen, when we start this, let's make sure we've talked about this. So let's right. back up from that two years when we talk right. about the book right. of John. Yeah. It's just th- that God's been all over this. All over this. I, I am a planner, I will say that, but I'm but to your point, I'm not smart enough to plan all this. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I just, even in preaching, I just try to be sensitive to how the Lord is leading, and I try to obey him in what I believe he's calling me to preach, and I think he lined all this up just out of grace and kindness toward our church to yeah. get us ready for this next season. So yeah, man, 
We want to talk about yeah, what we're so doing. We've been teasing it. So yeah. for the people who don't know, but who <laughs> did, haven't heard the sermon yet, which, by the yeah. way, you still need to go listen to it, let, give us an overview. Give okay. us a brief overview of what this is all about. All right. So we've already been using this language, and you said it. All to him is a two-year discipleship journey. Mm, all right? I love that. So we are going on a journey together as a church, and we want to help people take whatever steps of faith God is calling them to take. Um, we believe that we're all on a journey when it comes to following Christ. None of us have arrived just yet, and we believe that God is going to call different people to do different things, but, but we do want to journey together and help people grow as disciples and followers of Jesus. And so there are two primary goals within the journey, and we're going to keep talking about these until people are sick of hearing them. Mm-hmm. But, but the primary goal, goal number one, is 100% participation. Mm-hmm. You know, I talked over the weekend about how right now on average, we probably got about 3,000 people showing up across our locations, but not everybody comes every week. So if you put everybody in the same room at the same time, it's probably closer to 6,000. And then we got all these people that are watching online from who knows where, North right. Dakota, places right. like that. That's right. So the hope and the goal is this. This is primary that 100% of those people would participate in this journey by asking one big question. Am I giving my all to the one who gave his all for me or are there areas of my life that still aren't fully surrendered? Mm. And this really is about, or what the journey is about, it is greater surrender to the lordship of Jesus Christ. We, we wanna call our people to lay their lives down in response to the fact that Jesus laid his life down for them. And so this is not some journey where we're going to guilt you into greater obedience. What we want to do is hold up Christ and all the work he's performed and the sacrifice he made and all that he gave for us. And in response to what he has done, we want to give our all to him. We want to seek to bring every area of our lives under his lordship. That is the primary goal, 100% participation. The secondary goal is that we're believing God for $16.5 million to do all the work that he's calling us to accomplish. And you talked about the sermon over the weekend. I laid out all that work. We talked about it in great detail. The vision video talked about it in great detail. So if you want to know more about the work, you really do need to go listen to that. We've categorized it into three big initiatives, our church, our cities, and our world. And I'll just speak high level. Our church really is about our mission. And so we exist to relentlessly pursue those far from God to help them know and follow Jesus. That's what we will continue to do in this next season. So nothing's changing. It's not like the journey's replacing that, okay? No, we're still going to do that. Nothing is changing about the mission of Cross Point City Church. We're still going to gather for worship and connect people in groups and classes and engage the mission of Jesus through service and generosity. We're going to multiply disciples and leaders in churches, disciple kids and students, engage people online, help people to take next steps in their relationship with Christ. So nothing's changing there, all right? Now, our cities, this is about what we're doing outside the walls to serve the cities that, that God's placed us in, okay? And so this is a lot of stuff like expanding locations, planning new locations, doing a prison location. We're going to fight for the unborn, invest in foster care. We're going to serve um, families with kids with special needs. We're getting the, the Compassion Center up and going, and so we're going to take that to a new level. All this stuff that's going on to better serve our cities. And then our world really is about our global reach, Um, But in addition to our global reach, it also has to do with church planting and men's discipleship. A lot going on there, just different ways that we're investing in people in places where the gospel hasn't gone yet. And so I would say again, Will, to your point, you need to listen to that sermon to hear all the details of this, because I don't have time to go back through all of it on the podcast today. Um, There are a few things that I'm like super stoked about as part of the journey as it concerns the work. I was going to ask you though, man. Is there anything that like really sticks out to you that we've talked about so far? Uh, well, yeah, a lot of it. I really, I really think the the prison location mm. is, is special and unique, yeah. just because as we were looking at other locations that we're we're launching, uh, that one, uh, especially the the Hay State Prison that we're looking at specifically, um, I can say that, right? I've said it, so okay, you can okay, say good. it. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, been, I haven't been told go, I can't say it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> But even just praying about making, uh, praying that that door would open to do that, uh, and and knowing the 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 kind of people I think that are in that in that yeah. prison, like it's not going to look like another location, right? But right. it's it, it's such an incredible opportunity to to be in that place and to try to start small groups and disciple, yeah, yeah. 
um, men who may be in prison for the rest of their lives. Right, and, right. Uh, I think that, that's exciting. There's, there's a lot of it. I, yeah. I love the other location just thinking about continuing to, yeah. uh, to, to take new ground. That's the phrase you've right, used right. in the past. And the men's discipleship thing is super exciting as yep. well. Yep. Um, I just honestly, and looking at the list because, because I'm going to be honest, when you first came to us and said, "Here are all the things." Mm-hmm. It, it, it was like, "Okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna do our church, our cities, our world." And we're like, "Okay, that's good. That's generic enough. We can like fit some stuff in there." And you're like, "No, no, I have specific lists." Yeah. I remember going, "That's ridiculous. Like, there's so many <laughs> things to, to." But here's what's fascinating, and and again, I may be jumping ahead of myself. What's fascinating for me is just is is asking the question to myself, mm-hmm. right? Am I Am I giving my all to right. the one who gave his all? Like, I, I already attend church. I work for a church. Like, I'm involved. Yeah. I give. I serve. I do all these things. Like, what is the thing for me? Like, what's yep, the step? Yep. Like, what? how much more, right? Right, right. And, and I just had to really wrestle with that, and we could talk about it if we need to. But that question alone, I think, and just and just seeing how God has worked through all these things, like, I know this is what he wanted. I don't know how we're going to do it. I yep. don't know how we're going to do this thing with interns or residency or, or prison location and just door after door That's after right. door That's after right. door. So it's hard to pick one thing, honestly. It's yeah. hard to pick one thing because even the things that were on the list, like, ah, somebody will deal with that. Right. To see God already moving and opening doors, like he'd been working on this long before you ever came back That's from your right. sabbatical. That's right. It gets really exciting. Like, well, yeah. maybe the list is not long enough. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. yeah. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that because we did all these offsite retreats with people and we asked for all this feedback, which has been incredibly helpful. It's really um, aided in how we have shaped all of this. But one of the things that we heard from some folks at, at retreats were this feels like a lot. Right, yeah. And, and it is a lot. But again, we have thousands of people who are a part of our church these days. And if we want 100% participation, yeah. w- we have to give everybody a lane to run in. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so if, if we don't have enough, then people get to excuse themselves. So it's like, oh, no, 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 well, they have what they need and there's not a place for me. What I love about this is that there is a place for everyone. Yeah. There, there's an opportunity for everyone to be involved in some way. I actually had a lady, she caught me after one of the gatherings yesterday and she said, I'll tell you what I love about this. This is a God-sized vision. And I just thought to myself, praise God that she picked up on that. Yeah. Because to your point, it's like, this is so much bigger than us. I mean, what God is calling us to, it's going to require him to move and work in significant ways. None of us can pull it off. Yeah. Like none of us can stand up and, and manipulate or coerce people into doing any of this. Yeah. This is going to take a move of God. Yeah. Like God is going to have to move on the hearts of his people He's going to have to give clarity and direction and guidance. He's going to have to put resources in the hands of his people so that people can help to fund all of this work. And so again, what I love about it, and and it goes back to what she said, God-sized vision, if all of this happens, God alone will get the glory. If all of this comes to fruition, like nobody can take credit for it other than, than him. And so we will be forced to acknowledge God did this. And that's what excites me about it the most, I think. And yeah, and yeah. You what? stole my answers, by the way. <laughs> I was, I, prison location, men's discipleship. Sorry. Those are a couple of things I'm stoked about. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. exciting. It it's is. also exciting to even just, again, because when we when you first mentioned that, we didn't have a clue. We I didn't know. know where. We didn't have an avenue. We didn't know who to talk to. Yeah. And and just beginning to have conversations and people like, hey, my right. my daughter works there. Or, right, you know, right, we, right. We, we know a guy. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. incredible. And I, I go, just, if I may, the 100% participation part to me is also key because – when we talk about discipleship journey, that isn't just funny language. It isn't just correct. It isn't just trying to uh, to to put lipstick on a pig. Like we're we're saying no, no, no. Like if you're if if you're genuinely asking that question, we're asking every single person to ask that question yeah, because yeah. you know what? And you even said this too. Again, I may be getting ahead of myself. Um, if one person were just to write a check, because it's going to take money to do all these things, we get yep, that. Yep. But if one person wrote the check, great, awesome, we'll take it, we'll do all the things. Yeah. We're still going to ask 100% right. of the people <laughs> to ask the question. That's so yeah. big, because yeah. because it's going to be it's going to be financial for some. It's going to be different for others. All the different options that they have. But if everyone asks the question, That's if right. 100% of the people will just get on their knees and pray, God, what is the thing? What is the all for me? What's yep. the thing? I just I, I, my, I can't wrap my mind around. No, it's insane, isn't it, to think about? Yeah. Like, and and this is this is why the primary goal is so important. Yeah. Like, bro, can you imagine? Let's just let's just call it six thousand. Okay, let's go big. Let's yeah. say All right. Can you imagine if six thousand people just decided all of life is all about Jesus? Yeah. 
every area of my life, I am going to bring under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, every area. I'm gonna hold nothing back from him. I will deny myself, take up my cross, follow his teachings and his way of life. He can have it all. My marriage, my money, my parenting, my work, whatever it may be, yeah. nothing's in the dark, no skeletons in the closet, right. not trying to follow Jesus with all this baggage on my right. back. Right. 6,000 people said, I will surrender all of who I am to Jesus Christ, to his lordship. Can you imagine? Oh my can gosh. you imagine the move of God that might take place? Uh, I, I, yeah, it would be... It, it would be revival. It would it's be insane. yeah. It would change this community, right? Yeah. It it would open up doors, opportunities for us to move into other communities. And and again, we're talking about a hundred percent because you said it earlier, a hundred percent of the people who are listening to this podcast, a hundred percent of the people who are who are attending online or at one of our locations. If everybody does it, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it's unfathomable what God can do. There's no telling what we what we could see in our lifetime. Yeah, if we get this right by the grace of God. Yeah. I mean. There's just no telling. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's greater than we could ask or imagine in a moment like this. this is exactly. So what it so is. again, let me just say to to the folks out there that only hear the money piece, like that's a piece, hundred percent, because doing all the work costs money, mm. and you cannot separate generosity from discipleship. And mm. that that's not James saying that. That's Jesus saying that. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that later in the series, so I won't get ahead. But it's so much bigger than money. Yeah. I mean, you said it. If one person stroked the check today, we would gladly take it and deposit it, and we would get to work. And then the next two years, we would call our entire church to give their all to Jesus yes. because this is what it's about. Yes. Yeah. Well, listen, one of the, and I hope it's okay to say this, but even one of the emails that we got, because this stuff gets me excited. Yeah. There was a family that said, we're, we're in, we want to pack it, mail it to us, but we're in the, we're, we're going to sell everything and move to Cartersville because we want to be a part of what God's <laughs> How doing. How insane right? is that? So crazy. I, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's craziness. Incredible. It's incredible. Okay. So, uh, okay. I, I think about... That bigness, yeah. all of that, and and you you've had time to to process that. You you came back from your sabbatical. You you talked about what God put on your heart, what mm -hmm. you've pitched to write. So then, can we talk about, um, I guess, just areas in in, in someone's life okay. that they can surrender? Like, what does that really look like? If we're if we want people to genuinely ask the question, yeah, yeah. what is the thing, or, yeah. or how can you give your all? Right. What is that for you? Yeah. How do we how do we identify that? How do, how do they figure that out? Yeah, how do what, they figure it out? What areas of life that aren't surrendered, right? That's right. Is what we're asking. That's so right. okay. Yeah, I'll rattle off several thoughts and we'll add to the list, man. Um I, I talked about this in the sermon over the weekend. I think the word is primary. The word of God is primary. Oh yeah. Okay. So the call of Jesus in Luke chapter nine to deny ourselves, take up our crosses daily, and to follow him. The idea of following Jesus means that we follow his teachings and his way of life. So I gave people some homework. I'm like, hey, if you want to know how you're doing with this, go home, read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and just ask yourself, does my life look like that? Mm. Is the way that I am living aligned with the teachings of Jesus? Is the way that I'm living, is it, is it imitating the life of Jesus? And, and I think you got to start there. And you got to be really, really honest with yourself about, your life and how it compares to what you see in the gospels, in the pages of scripture. And so I think, again, if you will open the pages of the Bible, this is why in the discipleship guide, we gave everyone a reading plan for the next five weeks. And so I pray that you'll use that. The journals that we gave out over the weekend, use the reading plan because it's going to help you to do some of this work yeah. <laughs> to read the word and go, okay, where am I? And, and you're able to take a self-assessment. One of the things that I love about the word of God, it's like a mirror. Mm. And so if you will look into it, it will show you who you are and it will show you all the areas of life that you're still holding on to and how broken you are and how much you need the grace of God and what you need to lay down and surrender to God. And so look into the mirror that is the word and, and you'll see yourself clearly. I would say start there. Um, in addition, I would say you need to ask God to show you. And it's probably really good to ask for that before you open the word. Mm. But that's something you can pray for all throughout the day. Mm. And we actually, I challenge our people to do that over the weekend. Let's just get on our knees right now and ask God to show us. Mm. Hey, God, would you show me if there is an area of my life that I'm holding on to and I don't even know I'm holding on to it? Like, wh wh where am I refusing to really surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Just expose that for me, mm. reveal that to me. Mm. <laughs> Here's a really practical one. Ask some other people in your life to tell you. Mm. Uh, Will, we are married to women who I think are very okay with being honest with us, right? Yeah. 
Is your wife like she's super honest with you? Oh yeah, hundred percent. My yeah. wife's very honest with you. If Sometimes you really too honest, I feel Sometimes, like. <laughs> yeah, I, bro, I'm with you, man. I am totally with you. But I, I think an easy way, just go ask the person you're married to if you're married. Hey, wh where do you see a lack of surrender in me? They'll tell you. Yeah. Ask some trusted friends. This, this, by the way, is the importance of you being in community. We talk about the importance of groups all the time here at Cross Point. And man, my hope and prayers that our groups aren't just like little Bible clubs where people go in and fake who they are and whatever. I, we want this, these to be places where people are authentic and they're confessing their junk and they're spurring one another on and following mm. after Jesus. So if you got some people like that in your life, and I hope you do, you need to ask them. Mm. Hey, you see any blind spots in me? I was, I was actually at a dinner on Saturday night. We were at a dinner together, Will, for, yeah. uh, it was the birthday dinner for one of our elders. Right. And, and I was talking to a guy at, our, at my table about it, just blind spots. We all need people in our lives that see things about us that we can't see. Mm. So you need to go to some other people and go, help me to see what I can't. Mm -hmm. Do you see me holding on anything? Are there any, any areas of my life that, that I need to lay down at the feet of Jesus and, and leave behind? Mm. And then again, you just need to be really honest with yourself about all of this stuff. I, I think people are smart. I think we probably know. Like if there's that desire in us to truly follow after Jesus, I think we probably know. You got any other thoughts on this? Like would you add anything to the list? Here? No, I think it's great. I was thinking about that when you talked about blind spots, right? There's a thing called Jahari Window where he talks about there are things that, that are known by you and others. There are things that are secret that you hide from mm -hmm. others. There are things that are unknown because maybe you haven't grown into that yet. Yeah. But the most dangerous quadrant is that blind quadrant because it's things people see that you're not willing to accept. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, yeah, you can ask God to show you and you can ask others to tell you. But if at the end of the day you're not willing to accept it. Yeah, yeah. You're just running. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's super, super dangerous. Yeah. Well, and I guess we could add to the list, like, well, don't just be honest with yourself. You also need to be humble enough. That's right. That's to, right. To own it. Like, okay, what, what the Word is saying to you, what the Lord is showing you, what other people are telling you. Yeah. There's got to be this humility in you to yeah. go, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm hearing it. I may not want to see it, but I see it. Yeah. And then you ask the Spirit of God to help you lay it down, to help you release it. Yeah. I think that's another important point on this. Like, surrender mm. is impossible without the Spirit of God doing work in our lives. Mm. It's not like we can do this on our own, yeah. you know? It's not like I want to see all these things and go, all right, I'm letting them go now. No, this is a supernatural work of the Spirit where yeah. he's got to pry our hands off certain things. He's got to transform us more into the image and likeness of Jesus in those areas. So we have to cooperate with him in that, yeah. obviously. And I think a lot of what we're talking about is that cooperation. Yeah. But we got to be humble enough to confess it, acknowledge it, and to ask for the help that we need. That's big. And th this is going to lead into the next question I want to ask. But, but that, that it, when we talk about giving our all, yeah. it's not a thing. Right, right. right. It's, it, may it, it may be baby step number one to actually do this discipleship guide with your spouse or do it with your family, right, mm -hmm. to just – open the word of God or to actually right. start praying. Like it's not a thing. Okay, I did this thing. No, it's it's the first step to get to the 50th step. Like yeah, what are, yeah. what is the all? It's a list. Yeah, yeah. Right? You just may have to start somewhere. Right. And get going. So let's th let's talk about that then, all right? Cuz you talked about I mean just taken from Luke 9, right? That we're that if we're going to follow Jesus, mm -hmm. we have to deny ourselves and we yep. have to take up our cross. Now, and, right. and, I, and I love that verse because I can wrap my mind around denying self. Let's don't be self-centered, right? Uh, uh, save your glorification over over self-gratification. That makes sense. Die yeah. to myself, right? Yeah, I get yeah. that. But the take up your cross is always, it's kind of weird, right? Because it's like, <laughs> am I supposed to haul around some, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. some ancient wooden right. death machine? Like, what, what, what are we talking about here? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great, great question. I mean, in, in, in the context of Luke 9, it would have sounded really weird because Jesus was literally going to take up his cross, yeah, and they didn't know that yet. But yeah, and they didn't right. know, right? Yeah. I mean, he told them, he predicted it, but yeah. they still didn't have their minds fully around yeah. it. So to have a guy who's on the way to take up his cross in the ancient world that was ruled by Rome, Roman crucifixion was something all these guys were familiar with, right? They knew about it. They'd probably seen it. For him to say, take up your crosses daily. Okay, that's, that's weird because if you're taking up a cross, you're a dead man. The illustration that I gave over the weekend was if someone said, if Jesus said, hey, if you want to follow me, sit in the electric chair daily. That's <laughs> right. very, very strange, I'm, isn't it? Right, yes. Hey, t take up the torture device. Take up the device that's going to kill you. Carry that thing around. That's what you do if you really want to follow me. Um, but he's getting at something a lot deeper here than just sitting in a chair or taking up a piece of wood. 
Um, or Dietrich, putting it on a band and wearing it around your neck. 100%. Can you imagine how weird it would be today if we wore electric chairs on the ends of our necklaces? Right. It's kind of crazy, but, I mean, the cross is the symbol of our faith. Yes. Praise God, it is an empty cross. That's right. Amen. That's right. Um, but it was Dietrich Bonhoeffer who said that when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Mm. And this is what this means. When Jesus tells us to take up our crosses daily, it is a daily choice to die to ourselves. That in denying ourselves, we forget about ourselves completely. We release control to King Jesus. We orient our entire lives around him. And that in taking up our crosses daily, we are choosing obedience to him no matter the cost, even if it costs us our very lives. And I think that daily piece, I wanna just speak to that for a moment because it's, it's very, very significant. I didn't get a chance to talk about it over the weekend at all, but Will, it is incredible to me how throughout the Bible you see this emphasis on daily or day by day, living for right now in the present, right? Um, I think about it in the Lord's Prayer where Jesus says, give us this day our daily bread. I think about it from Romans 12 where it's, we renew our minds daily. Right. Living sacrifice, that's right, every 100%. day. 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think about Israel in the wilderness. God gave them manna right, every each day. day and he's mm -hmm. like, hey, don't take more than you need that's except... Right before the Sabbath, right? And if they took more than what they needed for that day, it all rotted. It was full mm -hmm. of maggots the next day. And so this is a daily decision. I, and I love this because here's, here's the thing that I think God is forcing us to do, to depend on him daily for what we need. It's like we can't get ahead of, of God. We're not called to live in yesterday and we're not called to worry about tomorrow. We're called to live in today, to worry about today, to think about today, to be obedient today which again, feels a lot more doable, right? I mean, let me just encourage somebody. If you wake up today and you go, all right, the, the goal for today is just to be obedient today. No matter what it costs me, I'm just gonna be obedient to Christ today. Don't get ahead of yourself, don't get ahead of him. And this really is the call, just die to yourself today. If I can say it like this, what this means is that our allegiance lies with King Jesus over and above everything else in life. But again, it is a daily choice that we make. Like we gotta climb out of beds and go, okay, today this is what I'm doing. Forget about me and I'm dying to self and I'm obeying Jesus. And then you get up the next day and you do it again. And so I just kind of wrote down some, some practical examples of this. Uh, what does it mean? I think it means different things for different people. So for the single person who's listening right now, it might mean that you need to break up with that person because that relationship mm. is toxic. It's not glorifying God. And if you're going to obey Jesus today, you can't be with him. Mm. You got to stop sleeping together. You got to stop shacking up together. Like you're unequally yoked. The whole missionary dating thing, not a good idea. You probably just need to end it so that you could be obedient to King Jesus. It's, mm. it's him above all else. Jump in and you can add examples too. I thought about work. And I thought about the person who works in an environment where being a Christian is frowned upon mm. or faithfulness to Christ in some way might get him fired for their job. Mm because they're constantly asked to do something unethical and they know they can't because devotion to Christ requires them to do the right thing. And what that might mean is that you do the right thing and you lose your job for it. Mm. That's total obedience to Christ no matter the cost. I think about money. I mean, as we go on this journey together, we're gonna force people to do work around the area of generosity. It may mean that you have to downgrade your lifestyle to be more generous. That God is calling you to give more than you're able to give right now because you're living beyond your means or you're in too much debt or whatever it may be. And so it might be a decision where you have to go, okay, you know what? Here, here's the decision we're going to make. Mm. And we're going to live below our means day by day so that we can be more generous and invest more in God's church and in his kingdom. I think in marriage, it's about you getting out of bed every day and playing your role. Mm. Okay, today, no matter what my wife does, here's what I'm doing today as a husband. I'm going to love her like Christ loved this church. Mm. And I'm going to give my life for her and sacrifice for her and empathize with her and all of the things that we're called to do. And wives, you just decide today, no, I don't care what he does. I'm going to honor him and respect him. And I'm going to do what I can to be a wife that glorifies God as I play my role in marriage. I even just jotted down enemies. I, th I thought about this, uh, how as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to pray for and to love our enemies to bless those who persecute us. Like this is so countercultural and counterintuitive, but this is yet another way that I, I think Christ calls us to obey him even when it's costly. I think the mistake a lot of people make is they choose obedience until it hurts. And this call mm. to take up our crosses daily means that we obey Christ even when it hurts. Mm. And we do that out of love for Jesus 
and because we know what's at stake. Our joy is at stake. Our mission is at stake. The lives of other people are at stake. I mean, there's a lot here that, that we've got to pay attention to if we really want to get this right. Mm. But again, it's total obedience no matter the cost. You got other thoughts or examples? Well, I just that cost thing, it's, like you said earlier, it's different for everyone. Yeah. It just made me think about, I think it was Muhammad Ali that said he doesn't start counting sit-ups until they start hurting. And I, I think like for some people, it might be easy to quit a certain habit or, or, or change work or do something yeah. uh, because they're, they're trying to be obedient. But, but that sacrifice, that sacri- like if it's not really sacrificial, if it's yeah. not really bothering you, if it's not, like if it's not costing you something, right. it, 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 there may be a question of like, is, is that enough? Is that really what God is calling you to? Again, I think there are steps. And I think it's different for everyone. Yeah. But I, the, I remember the story of Jesus. Like there are people giving, giving, and the woman came and gave two pennies. And they're like, yep, that yep. was nothing. It's like, yeah, no, it was everything. Right. For her, that was everything. Yeah. And again, that's not just financial what we're talking about. But for some people, they're like, oh, I did something. It's like, yeah, but is that, right, right. Is that really what God was asking you to do? Or is that Correct. just the easy thing to yeah, do? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she gave out of her poverty. Right. While other people gave out of their riches, and and again, I think we can apply that to so many different areas yeah. of life, you know. And I, I do think it's a really good question to ask: Is my obedience costing me anything? Yeah, that, that's it. That's a great <laughs> because, question. Because if your obedience isn't costing you anything, you're doing it wrong. Obe- yeah. Obedience to Jesus is always costly. Yeah. And and surrender is always costly, and sometimes it does hurt because it requires great sacrifice. And so following Jesus isn't always easy, but I will say it's always worth it. Mm. I said this over the weekend, you know, it's it's through surrender that we align ourselves with God's way of life. And it's only when we do life God's way that we experience true joy. Mm. And that joy, I believe, is more needed in the world today than ever before. I mean, my gosh, the world is anxious and depressed and hopeless Mm. and we have an opportunity as a church as we go on this journey together to show the world what they're missing by our surrender to Jesus. Mm. Because when we surrender our lives to him in response to what he's done for us and we do life God's way and we choose daily obedience, all of a sudden this inward joy and contentment starts to characterize our lives and then it flows out of us and the world sees that and the world starts to recognize that we have something that they don't which opens the door for the gospel to be shared. So again, there's so much at stake here when it comes to getting this right. Yeah. And it's not just about the work and it's not just about obedience. There's something greater going on. Yeah. It is the glory of God. It's the good of his world. It is our joy as his people. This is why we take up our crosses daily and we follow. Yeah. Well, you didn't tell us to take up our cushions. <laughs> That'll <laughs> preach all day, Will. Let's go, man. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> Uh, all right, so call to action then. Yeah, what what yeah. can we tell our listeners to do to participate? Yeah. Well, I'm just going to repeat what I said over the weekend, if that's okay. Yeah, do it, yeah. And we'll see if this goes anywhere else. A few things. Pray. And I, I know I joked yesterday about, you know, praying for Bob. And <laughs> I think we've all prayed like that at times. And, and I know we don't mean to do that. But, you know, this is the whole thing where somebody says, hey, will you pray for me? And you're like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll pray for you. And then you forget to and you don't. And so it's like, Will, if you're like, James, will you pray for me? Absolutely. And then I see you three weeks later, and I forgot. And so I'm like, dear God, please be with Will. Only so that I can go and say to you, hey, Will, I've been praying for you. Right. And, and I just challenged our church, and I want to challenge all of our listeners. Let's not pray like that. Mm. You know, let's, let's really pray. Let's make it a point to seek the face of God each and every day, to talk to him, to ask him how he wants us to be a part of this. As I said a few moments ago, let's talk to him about areas of our life that might not be fully surrendered. Ask him to expose that, to reveal that. Another thing that I have been challenging our people to do and even our staff, like if there's anything in your life that is breaking your fellowship with God and preventing you from hearing from him, deal with it. Deal with it. First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So in dealing with it, what we get is the grace of God. And confessing it, what we give is the forgiveness and the cleansing of God. So it's a great thing when you deal with it. But if there's anything breaking your fellowship, I, I'm just asking, would you would you figure that out? So that as we go on this journey together, you can hear God clearly on how he's calling you to be a part of it all, you know? So I would say pray. You want to add anything to prayer? Well, I, I think about, uh, I was talking to Moody today, and he was talking about something he learned. I think it actually may have been from... Uh, from Joby Martin out in uh, 1122. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just asking, you know, when people say I'm praying, I'm praying, and, and you'll use the term I'm praying for, 
But even thinking about praying for, not just saying mm-hmm. a prayer, yeah. like something weak, like I said something, but are yeah. actually praying for, like for the thing or for the person that yeah. that God would intervene or that God would bless or, or that 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 the, the 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 true sacrifice or the true next step would be revealed. Like like what are you praying for? That's good. Like it's specific and it's intentional. It's not just yeah. a I got on my knees and I said something right, right. and you know about the weather and yep. how good the meal was. Like it was a I'm specifically praying for this. Right, right. That's right. Well and we gave out those prayer bracelets oh, yesterday yeah. too to serve as a prompt to pray. So I would even encourage our people, when you see those around your wrists or wherever you put that thing, make it a point to pray in that way that you're talking mm-hmm. about very, very intentionally. Yeah. You know, pray about and pray for the things that you just mentioned, yeah. you know, and, and and I believe if we pray in that way, God will make it clear oh, yeah. and known to us. I, I believe it's how he wants to use us, how he wants yeah. to change us. So so pray. That's good. You know, the other thing I talked about was just leaning in and you listening to the podcast today. That's one of the ways that you can lean in. We're going right. to talk about all to him over the next several weeks on the podcast, and we'll just continue unpacking the journey and, and using this as another resource to invest in people and to disciple people. I also said show up to church, be in the room, be at a location, be at a gathering. If you're not close to us, tune in online, watch, lean in that way. But we're, we're really calling our church to a lot over the next several weeks, and I want everybody to hear it and be informed and yeah. be in the know. So being in the room is really, really important. Yeah, Showing up and participating, really important. And again, I believe that just by showing up, you are positioning yourself before the Lord to hear from him. Yeah. And that he's going to direct you and guide you as we go on this journey. Well, and if I can, because even just showing up or, or, or tuning in online or listening to the podcast for the next several weeks, like we're not done talking about it. Yeah. Like just because you presented it this week doesn't mean that right. that we we just gave all the summer you need. That no, was the it, intro, man. Yeah. Sermon one was That's just right. the intro. That's right. So we, <laughs> we need you to hang in every week for the next several weeks to get the whole big picture. That's yeah. right. No doubt. I also talked about group, like being a group. Mm. If you're in a group, go to your group. If you're not in a group, join a group. If you don't know how to do that, make up a group. <laughs> right. And and we gave out these discipleship guides over the weekend and included discussion questions in there. So it is easier than it's ever been just to start a group right now, okay? You can, like, seriously, pull some people together, get some friends together. Hey, we're going to meet at this time in my living room, and we're just going to talk about these questions together as part of All to Him. But community does matter. I mean, it matters that we don't go on this journey alone, but that we're walking with other people as we seek to follow after Christ. So lean in, and then finally do whatever God asks you to do. Mm. And I talked about this in two ways, you know, I, and I really do believe this. I think God is going to call some of our people to do things that were nowhere on their radar yeah. before we started this journey together. Or something they've been running from for a while. 100%. And it's about to get real uncomfortable for mm-hmm. some folks. It's going to be very life-giving for some folks. But I, I think some people are going to be really surprised in the coming weeks. Like, hold on, God, you want me to do what? Mm. And here's what I want to say. You just got to go for it. You got to do it. You got to trust God. He has proven his trustworthiness through the cross of Jesus Christ, through all that he's provided and blessed you with, like he's got you. And if he's calling you to something, he's going to see you through it. Um, I, it's funny, even one of my girls, like we have some neighbors who who have several foster kids and have done foster to adopt. And one of my daughters, because she knows that we're doing foster care as a church, she's like, hey, are we going to foster some kids? And I was like, you know, first off, we got a two-year-old in our house that's still kicking our tails, so we'll see. But But here's what I said to my daughter. If the Lord calls us to do that, we will absolutely do that, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. And so, I mean, our family's praying about all of this. I, I know what God burdened my heart with, and, and our elders and our leadership team prayed through all this together, and we all agreed, yeah, this is what God is leading us to do. Um, but, but that's for our church. Now, my family's like, all right, God, what about us? How do you want us to be a part of this? So whatever God's calling you to do, just do that, and then whatever God asks you to give, give that. And, and I've been talking, I've been having some lunches with people recently, and I've been talking about the difference between radical generosity and rational generosity, okay? Rational generosity is generosity that starts with the spreadsheet. You know, you get out of the budget and you look at all the numbers yeah, interesting, yeah. and you make a very reasonable decision based on the numbers that are here. This is what I think I can give. Mm. That's rational generosity. Radical generosity is where you go meet with God in the secret place. Mm. And you seek his face and you're like, God, tell me. Tell me what I'm supposed to give. Radical generosity is a result of divine revelation. And when you receive that number from God, I'm just trying to prep some of you. 
for some of you, it's gonna make no sense. You will get out the spreadsheet and it will make no sense on paper and you're just gonna have to trust God to put in your hands what you need to give what he's asking you to give. So as we go on this journey together, that's my thing, whatever he wants from you, whatever he asks you to do, just do that. And remember, he gave his all for you. He's got you. You can give your all to him and you can do it joyfully. Mm. It's good stuff. We can yeah. talk about this for a, a while. Oh, I'm, I got, I, I got so I much. So, I know, right? We got to save some of that for future I'm trying podcasts. to hold back, yeah. man. I'm, yeah, I'm already yeah. working. I'm weeks ahead, so I'm trying to bite my tongue on a lot of oh, things yeah. and not get ahead of us, but yeah. Well, uh, we've got, uh, we're going to cover uh, our church, our cities, our world, everything all to him in the next couple of weeks. Yep. And we definitely want everybody to continue to listen to the podcast and, of course, tune in and watch the messages. Or if you're close by, come, come attend, hear what it's all about. It's exciting. You can go to alltohim.crosspointcity.church and read all about that as well. But uh, we'll put a pin in it for today, okay. right? Otherwise, we'll just sit here and talk. I know. Keep I going. Know. Yep. But let me say this, if you want to learn more about All to Him or would like to receive a discipleship guide and bracelet to pray with us or follow along with us through this series, just email us at info at crosspointcity.com or DM us on Instagram or Facebook. And if you'll just give us your address uh, and that direct message, we'll send you all the goodies free of charge. And as always, thank you for listening. As you go, we want you to know we love you, we're here for you, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Pursuit with James Griffin. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll never miss an episode. If you have questions about the message, the scriptures, or faith in general, you can send them to us by texting the word QUESTION to the number 22722. For more information about our church or this podcast, please visit crosspointcity.com or follow us online at Crosspoint City. If you found value in this podcast, we would love it if you took time to like it and share it with a friend. Doing that will help more people know and follow Jesus. And finally, we want to invite you to join us each week for one of our gatherings in person or live on YouTube. We hope to see you soon.